So we're going to look at a couple of apps that manipulate data in a database, a local SQLite database and a uh, cloud hosted database, Firestore. And once we dive into the apps, they're a little bit, um, I don't necessarily want to say they're a little bit complicated. They're, they're not so complicated, but it's easy to get lost in the uh, syntax and uh, all of the manipulations that we're doing. And so I wanted to try to abstract some of the lessons uh, about how to work with the database uh, that apply to all of these cases. So um, this material might sort of feel a little ungrounded before we've gone through all of the details, but it's also sort of to orient you um, as, as those details start to, to pile on. <clears throat> so one thing to keep in mind when we're manipulating data in a database is that some parts of the data model, the objects that you're reading and writing, some of those parts are written by your client code and some of the parts are written by the server. And you should sort of know which is which. Timestamps are often written on the server. IDs might be written on the, on the server. Uh, Firestore actually has a really nice way of generating IDs for you. Uh, we also generate random IDs in one of our projects and we generate random IDs so that two different clients without communicating can generate IDs independently. Now you might say, if they're random, what's to stop them from generating the same ID? And the answer is probability. <laughs> so if you have a big enough, sorry, if you have a big enough random space, uh, the probability of collision is, you know, less than the probability that from quantum fluctuations, our sun is just going to disappear. So, so the probability works in our favor in that case. Um, but yeah, so it's important to know what parts of your model are, are written by the client, was written by the server. Um, and sort of along those lines, there's the in-memory representation of your data, and there's the storage representation of your data. And you should understand when you're pulling things from storage into memory, and when you're moving things from memory back into storage. And so sometimes it might make sense to modify the memory version and not modify the storage version. Sometimes you might, whenever you modify the memory version, you might then want to store it back uh, to storage. You have to think about this a little bit in terms of the failure sem semantics of your application. If you modify an in-memory data structure and then you crash, when you come back up, the storage will not be updated. And that could be confusing for your, for your clients. So a lot of times uh, we try to make sure that we only manipulate the memory state after we've written the storage state to make sure that we're displaying the, the very latest to, to our clients. And whenever we display something on the app, that's sort of never gonna go away in, in the event of a crash. Now, one, one uh, way that we do this, uh, which we do, both in SQLite and in the cloud database, but we do it even more in the cloud database, uh, is by exposing our data using live data. So uh, up to this point, you know, we've seen view models and we've seen live data, and it's been very important in terms of fetching data over the network. It's super important when we're not only fetching data, but also storing data back over the network. And so uh, we're gonna see an idiom, you know, in our uh, cloud database application where Anytime we manipulate the database, anytime we store or create a new record, at the end, we fetch things through live data. And then because our uh, views are all hooked up to that live data, the user does the manipulation. We sort of do the magic in the background. And then at some point in the future, the uh, display gets updated. And that's sort of a good way of doing it. And that's sort of kind of exactly what you want. Like the user does something. If something goes wrong, they don't see any change or we can pop up a dial that says, hey, something went wrong. That's good because what users really don't like is they do something, you change the display, the app crashes, 
And then when it comes back up, it's the old display. And the user's like, hey, I entered this piece of data. The app got that piece of data because it showed it back to me. And yet then that data disappeared on, after a crash. That's bad. So the way we avoid that is, you know, we, um, we export our, uh, our, our data using a live data to view model. And then just like when we talked about uh, foreign keys in our database as pointers, you should think of uh, what refer, um, how your data references other parts of the data, those are also pointers. So in particular, one of the things we're, we're, we're gonna be doing is manipulating images. Those images are going to be stored either in a local database or they're gonna be stored in a cloud database. However, in, the, in either case, they're represented by path names and those path names are stored in other objects. So that path name, even though it refers to a local file or refers to a cloud file, in which case a URL, but it's still a path name, that, that path name is a form of a pointer. So what it, it's, it's identifying a piece of data that we can fetch independently. And whenever we have pointers in our database program, uh, we have to worry about referential integrity. And I know, you know, it, it might just become a sort of a mantra at this point. It's like, why is Butchell always talking about referential integrity, referential integrity? That's uh, because uh, the, some of the most vexing problems that you come, uh, you know, that you encounter when uh, dealing with the database sort of boil down to problems with referential integrity. And there's a particular one with our, our cloud database uh, app that, that we'll talk about. Um, at some length. Um, so yeah, so, uh, you know, this is just to, to emphasize the same point. Um, uh, the notion of a pointer definitely applies within a, a SQLite uh, table where a foreign key from one table points to a row of another table. That's also a form of pointer. And we need to make sure when we're writing our data that uh, our pointers are always valid. And what that means is basically, if you have a piece of data and you have a pointer to a piece of data, and so maybe this data is like an image file, and then the pointer is the path to that image file, you never write the path before you write the object. You always write the object first and then write the pointers to the object. If you follow that rule, your application will have referential integrity, your users will be happy, and I don't know, you make lots of money or something, or you get promoted. Anyway, referential integrity, it's, it's what's for dinner. <laughs>